All right, let's move on to the technical state of Georgia athletics and go to the college football. Georgia State has opened up their preseason camp. They are in full swing. They are preparing for their season opener against Army on September 4th, which is less than a month away, so they have a lot to get in as far as preparations go. But here is head coach Sean Elliott on the start of training camp. You know, a lot of experience returning on our football team, a lot of, I guess you would call them uh, from ourselves, high expectations coming from our own selves. Uh, and looking forward to a great camp. Uh, I think we've got 24 practices scheduled. I think seven of them are in helmets. Uh, eight are in what we call thud, and the rest are in pads. Have a couple scrimmages here in the uh, next few weeks and just see exactly where our football team is before we uh, kick it off September 4th against a, a really good Army football team. So, uh, you know, like everyone, uh, you know, it, it's an exciting time. You know, excitement's uh, abound here in this uh, football office today. All of our coaches are ready to go, and I think our players are ready to get back and get started. Yeah, and Atlanta, I'll say Atlanta. Georgia State, they are based in Atlanta, but Georgia State has a really veteran-laced roster. They have 25 sophomores, 20 juniors, and 26 or 27 seniors, including six super seniors, guys that come back with the extra year eligibility that was granted due to the pandemic. As far as starters go to return 22 of 24 starters, 11 on offense and nine on defense, in addition to returning their punter and place kicker. And remember last year, the team earned its third bowl berth in the past four years and actually won that contest, defeating Western Kentucky in the Lending Tree Bowl. So the team brings back a lot of experience and that has made this training camp pretty unique for Coach Elliott and the Panthers. Here he is on why this has been a different camp than normal. Get our returning starter, our returning production offensively and defensively. I think any coach that looks at that and you can exact, see exactly where we are. We didn't lose a whole lot. Uh, we lost really one player that had uh, you know, significant stats from a year ago, a pass rusher, but I think we've We've answered that question. Uh, we've got great leadership. Our, our leadership from a year ago, uh, guys that are coming back, the so-called super seniors, and then the, the guys that would actually be seniors coming into it. So we've got an, an abundance of leadership, and that means good quality of practices. That means, that means a lot of focus and a lot of energy. And when you have that much returning, uh, it, it's a little bit easier on the coaching staff as well because they've been through so much. They know what to expect and, and how to conduct themselves. Yeah, and the biggest thing you take away from that is having all those veterans return. You're not doing as much installation as you normally would. And we'll get to this as well. With what those returning starters, they're saying, then let's go to statistics, statistics. Let's go over those. They return 98% of their total offense. They return nine starters, so I said, from that defense, which was top 10 in FBS and sacks and turnovers forced. So they have guys who are used to playing major snaps and major plays, large amount of plays, you know, for the team. They also retain their offensive coordinator in Brad Glenn and their defensive coordinator in Nate Fuqua for another season. I asked Coach Elliott directly about the retention of the coordinators and what that means for the team. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really critical to retain your staff, especially the coordinator positions. Uh, so many times, you know, in this day and age of football, coordinators come in and, and they want to bring in their system with their terminology terminology so you have to you have to go back and reteach everybody the same you know the, basically the same plays and system but that's a new terminology um we don't have to do that it's very familiar with all of us as a coaching staff uh, it's very familiar with our players you know our players run plps which is player-led practices all year they did an abundance of those this summer uh, they know the terminology they can go out and execute it and then our older guys can teach it. So retaining those two coordinator positions is, is very, very, it's a big advantage for us. Yeah, so they are in the beginning stages of the training camp. Over the next few shows, we'll do a specific Georgia State preview, but we'll break down the offense and defense and go position by position as far as who they have returning back and maybe some other reserves that are going to step up and have some big contributions for Georgia State football. So look forward to doing that over the next few shows. As far as the rest of college football and things, I guess we haven't, yeah, Texas and Oklahoma, they're going to be joining the conference, I think it's 2025 as we record this show. Not a surprise there. Once that became public as far as the flirtation or the potential of those two teams 
went to the SEC during SEC Media Days a few weeks ago. You knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when. Obviously not this year, but what's going to be next year, what's going to be six, seven years from now, because of all the contracts and the legalese that comes with it. But the word is, is that, and then the SEC, very slick by them, they never offered an invitation to the conference until they could formally do it. So even during SEC media days, all this rumors and stuff going on, Sankey, the, the commissioner of the SEC and other major people were like, we know nothing about this. We have no idea. And very smart with that. But now it looks, looks like the invitation was offered. It's been accepted. There's going to be a lot of legal stuff going on with it. Texas A&M is mad. Oklahoma State is mad. So I think there's going to be some they have TV contracts. And that's really the biggest thing. They got to buy out contracts, sign new ones, all of that stuff. I think the Pac-12 and the Big Ten will be smart to be, be aggressive as far as inviting some of those teams. I think the AAC may have a, something to say about it. You know, we'll see what's going on, you know, with all of that. Uh, but that's, that wasn't a surprise at all that those teams are moving on into the SEC.